Okay, so now I, I've got a little bit of a different of a graph. Um, if you notice, this one is going down instead of going up, like our last example. But it's really the same idea. We can still find the slope of it. Um, this happens to be quantity of uh, in an IV bag in milliliters over time. So what happens to an IV bag? It drains. It goes down over time. So our our graph our linear relationship is going to be going downward. So as time goes, increases, the quantity in that bag decreases, which makes sense. Um, and so <coughs> when you go down like this, this would be called a decrease, would be called decreasing, a decreasing function. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more later about functions. And if you're going up, as your horizontal axis gets bigger, right? We're walking, if we thought about walking on this in the forward direction, in the positive direction of the horizontal axis, right, our, our graph would be going down. And if on the other one we walked on it in the positive direction of the axis, we would be going up. So we would say that one was increasing. So we've got a decreasing function here. Let's see if we can find the slope. So if I want to find the slope, it's the same thing. So I'm going to start at, this is 1,000, and if you'll notice this, this uh, graph has a little bit different scale. Our last graph had 1, 2, 3, 4. This one go, is going by hundreds, which makes sense, um, 100 milliliters at a time, since there are 1,000 milliliters in that IV bag. So if we go down 1, uh, or 100, I guess it is, we can't quite tell how far we went. If you, if you look really closely, um, we're not quite perfectly on a corner, so we can't tell. Um, <clears throat> so we can keep going until we can see the next spot, right, where we have a, a spot where it lands right perfectly on to um, where to where the grid crosses so that'll be easy for us to read so if we if we go over and then up we see we went over two and up one two three but these are in hundreds so we went up 100 200 300 um, but we didn't go up we actually went down if we went positive 2 in the x direction and down in the y direction. So always measure positive in the x direction and, and up or down in the y direction. Or you could do the other way. Always measure positive or negative in the x direction and always positive in the y direction. Uh, it just saves yourself some confusion so you don't get them mixed up. So, <clears throat> which goes on top? The x's or the y's? So the change in the y goes on top. So how much did we go? We went down 300. So down 300, we're going to write as negative 300. And this is milliliters. And we went pot in the pot. If we go down 300, we went in the positive direction too. And that is hours. Okay. So for every three two hours we go forward, we go down 300 milliliters in our IV bag. Um, you could have done it the other way. You could have got, think of this as going backward two, so in the negative direction two, and up in the positive direction 300. But if you look at that, the negative two is on the hours, so we go backward in time. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. So having a, mathematically, having a negative in the top of the fraction is the same as having a negative in the bottom of the fraction. You Both answers will be negative. A negative divided by a positive is negative. A positive divided by a negative is negative. So both answers represent the same thing. This one makes a little bit more sense to us because we only go forward in time. So we wouldn't want to write a slope of 300 milliliters for going back in time two hours. We're saying it's going down 300 milliliters for every two hours. Um, what if we wanted to know per hour, one hour? Well, if we take our negative 300 and divide by two, we get negative 150 milliliters per one hour. So that, that would mean our slope is 
negative 150, so it goes down 150 milliliters for every hour. Uh, so slope is another, another fancy way to think about slope is called rate of change. So we're looking at the rate at which this guy is changing, and that's all slope is. Um, and so <coughs> when we look at the rate of change, a lot of times we want it in per unit, and this will be called a unit rate because we're looking at how much this is decreasing per one hour, so per one unit. A unit is for one. So the rate of change is just a fancy way of saying how fast is this changing, which is just another way to say what is the slope.